In this video, I'm going to walk you through solving the Alex problem using specific heat capacity to find temperature change. In this particular problem, we have a scenario where there's a chemical reaction that's taking place in a flask that is submerged in a water bath. Let's just draw a picture of what that would look like. So here's a container. This will be the container that we use for our water bath, and we're going to be putting a flask inside this container. There's some sort of chemical reaction that's taking place in this flask while the flask is submerged in water. If this chemical reaction is exothermic, heat will be transferred from the reaction flask into the water bath, which will cause the temperature of the water to increase. If the reaction in the flask is endothermic, heat will be transferred from the water into the flask, which will cause the temperature of the water to decrease. In this particular problem, we're being asked to calculate what the change in temperature is for the water. We'll be using the QSMAT equation, Q equals S M delta T. And for this equation, we're gonna be thinking completely in the context of water. So that means we want to know the heat or the Q for the water, the specific heat capacity of the water, the mass of the water, and the temperature change of the water. Let's take a look at the data that's been given to us in the problem and see how it fits into this equation. First, it tells us that we have 7.60 kilograms of water, so that's our mass of water. And remember in the QSMAT equation, the mass needs to be in units of grams, not kilograms, so we'll multiply this by 1,000, 7,600 grams. Also, put that right over the top of some important information. This is um, next telling us that our temperature initially of the water bath is 32 degrees Celsius. That's going to be important. We're being asked to calculate the final temperature, so we don't know what that is, and we also don't know what delta T is. Now, last but not least, it's telling us that 130 kilojoules of heat flows out of the flask and into the bath. So that's definitely gonna be our Q, and remember that this Q needs to be in units of joules, not kilojoules, for the um, QSMAT equation. So I'm just going to go ahead and also multiply this by 1,000 to get it into units of joules. Now, what we really need to be careful about here, and we need to pause for a minute and think, we need to be really careful to make sure that we get the correct sign for Q. Is this negative? 130 kilojoules or is it positive 130 kilojoules in order for us to determine the sign of q we need to think about what the problem is telling us and uh, what that means for the water so this is specifically saying that heat is flowing out of the flask and into the bath that means that our heat is going in this direction right here now we need to think about the sign of q for the water we don't need to think about the sign of Q for the chemical reaction. We need to think about it for the water. Heat is flowing into the water, which means that the water is increasing in energy or increasing in heat. And that means that the sign of Q for the water is positive for this particular problem. Now that we have all this information, let's go ahead and plug it into the QSMAT equation. We have our 130 times 10 to the third joules for our Q. The specific heat of water, which is given to us over here, is 4.18 joules per gram Kelvin. The mass of the water is 7,600 grams. And the delta T, we don't know, but we can solve for that in this problem. So let's go ahead and do the math so far. One hundred and thirty times ten to the three divided by four point one eight divided by seventy six hundred. This gives us a delta T of four point zero nine. And when we're talking about delta T, delta T can uh, does have units of either degrees Celsius or Kelvin, your choice, because the Celsius and Kelvin temperature scale have the same increment. Because the Alex problem is asking us to express our answer in Celsius and our initial temperature is in Celsius, we'll go ahead and use that unit. Now, delta T, as you know, is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. We know that the initial temperature was 32 degrees. Um, the delta T is 4.09. The final temperature, we don't know. And so now all that we have to do here is just solve for TF. 
The trickiest part about this problem is making sure that you get the signs correct, especially the sign for Q. The second trickiest part of this problem is gonna be this temperature change calculation right here, making sure that you're putting everything in the right spot. It looks like our final temperature for this is going to be 36.1 degrees Celsius.